Hello learners, today we will be looking into the evolution and recommendation of our national curriculum framework which came out in 2005. As you must be knowing, any national education system is based on the common curriculum framework which is designed keeping in view the national needs and requirements. In India also, keeping different policies in mind, national curriculum framework have been developed from time to time and implemented all over the country. Such framework was then reviewed for its achievement in terms of national goals. We will review the latest national curriculum framework being implemented currently in our country. Since National Policy of Education 1986, which was followed by Program of Action 1992, it proposed a national framework for curriculum as a means for evolving a national system of education. The National Policy of Education and Program of Action envisaged a child-centered approach to promote universal enrollment and universal retention of children up to 14 years and substantial improvement in the quality of education in the school. The National Curriculum Framework is also visualized as a means of modernizing the system of education. The National Curriculum Framework 2005 reviews and refers to the recommendations of the Madalyar Commission and Kothari Commission and reviews the development of curriculum framework of 1975, 1988 and 2000. It heavily draws from the report entitled Learning Without Burden 1993 and National Policy on Education 1986 examining the problems of curriculum overload. With the background of various policies, commissions and especially the Yashpal Committee report on learning without burden, the national curriculum framework was restructured and redesigned in 2005. Now if you remember then the Yashpal Committee, it identified the problem of our present of our country in the school education system that information is being regarded as knowledge and learning at school, this is what they emphasize that learning at school cannot become a joyful experience unless we change our perception of the child as a receiver of knowledge and move beyond the convention of using textbooks as a basis for examination. It further states that the impulse to teach everything arises from lack of faith in child's own creative instinct and their capacity to construct knowledge out of their experience. The National Policy on Education 1986 assigned a special role to NCERT in preparing and promoting National Curriculum Framework. Considering NPE 1986 and Yashpal Committee Report 1993 in perspective, the Executive Committee of NCERT decided in its meeting of July 14, 2004 to revise the National Curriculum Framework. The process of development of NCF was initiated in November 2004. Various structures were set up such as National Steering Committee chaired by Professor Yashpal and 21 national focus groups on themes of curricular areas, systemic reforms and national concerns. Some of the focus groups which were formed during this time were Aims of Education, Systemic Reforms for Curriculum Change, Teaching of English, Teaching of Indian Languages, Teaching of Mathematics, Teaching of Science, Teaching of Social Science, Habitat and Learning, Art, Music, Dance and Theatre, Heritage Craft, Educational Technology, Work and Education, Health and Physical Education, Early Childhood Education, Problems of Scheduled Castes and Scheduled Tribes Children, amongst others, Gender Issues in the Curriculum, Education of Children with Special Needs, Education for Peace, Curriculum, Syllabus and Textbooks, Teacher Education, for curriculum renewal and examination reform. So these were some of the focus areas in which lots of deliberations were invited and special meetings were convened at various points to gather more information and more knowledge base, more insights as to how the curriculum should be created and drafted. Deliberations were invited from multiple sources involving stakeholders at all levels, school principals, school teachers, NGOs and others to help in the shaping of the draft of National Curriculum Framework. The draft was translated in 22 languages listed in our schedule of the constitution. These translated versions were widely disseminated and consultations with stakeholders at district and local levels in developing final drafts were initiated. 
The National Curriculum Framework was approved finally by the CAP Committee in September 2005. Some of the guiding principles for the curriculum development were first and foremost connecting knowledge to life outside the classroom, outside the school. Now this was a weakness which was identified by many research scholars, many theoreticians, many practitioners that whatever is being taught in the schools, in the textbook is not meaningful for the learners. The learners are not able to apply it in their real life context. So it was decided that whatever learning has to be designed, it should be connected to the local environment, to the real environment which the child is interacting on the day to day basis. Second guiding principle was ensuring that learning shifts away from rote methods. So there was a paradigm shift which was witnessed that learning is not something which is happening within the four walls of the classroom. Rather, it is something which should be more participative, involving the learners to think, to reflect upon their experiences, bringing their emotions, their own experiences, their social, their cultural influences, their family, whatever experiences that they are getting at home and relating it with their curriculum. Practically engaging in activities so that they are able to make sense of what they are learning in the schools. The third principle is enriching the curriculum so that it goes beyond textbooks. Earlier what used to happen that the school teachers used to feel that if the textbook is assigned to them, they have to just cover the chapter, the activities which are given at the back. But now the notion of a textbook was changed. It was now visualized as a book which is going to support the teacher in transacting the curriculum. So it was decided that the textbook should be enriched with more and more activities, more and more experience sharing activities and experiences. Next, it was also decided that the examinations should be made more flexible. Another principle which was identified on which the National Curriculum Framework is based is that child is an active learner. He can construct his knowledge and the teachers should try to encourage them to construct this knowledge by encouraging them to ask questions, to share their experiences, to share their doubts, to relate what they are learning in school to things happening outside in their immediate environment, in their neighborhood, in their family, encouraging them to answer from their own experiences and in their own words rather than by memorizing. Earlier what used to happen that the teacher used to accept only those words which were written in the textbook. But now it was being said that we should recognize the voice of the child and very importantly it was understood that the adult's perception should change. They should recognize that learner is not a passive recipient of knowledge, rather he is an active participant, he is a co-constructor of knowledge. And it also emphasized that gender, class, creed should not be constraints. So when we are imparting the curriculum in the classrooms, then we should not be gender bias, we should not design our lesson plans differently, keeping these class and creeds issues in our minds. We should address the needs of all the special groups, highlight the value of integrated curriculum. This was another very significant point that the curriculum, the syllabus which are prescribed for a particular standard, it was envisioned that these subjects are not compartments, watertight compartments, rather there should be more of integration in it. It was also emphasized that designing appropriate, age appropriate and context specific, challenging and interesting activities should be encouraged. Another hallmark of the National Curriculum Framework 2005 was that the constructivist approach should be followed in the classroom. Constructivist pedagogy is to be emphasized, which means that there should be more of questioning from the other side, more of interaction between the teacher and the learners, more of interaction between the teacher and the community more visits to the library, more visits to the learning resource centers, more visits to the places which are around, the local resources which are around the school, more opportunities to explore nature and ultimately everything should be geared towards meaningful learning. For languages, it said that the three language formula should be implemented in true spirit with emphasis on mother tongue as a medium of instruction. It was also felt that the language across curriculum, this approach should be promoted all over. Wherein it means that the language skills of listening, speaking, reading, writing, they are very much required for success in all other subjects, be it mathematics, science, social science or any other related discipline. So, 
When the teacher is planning instruction, she should ensure that the language skills of the learners are also enhanced. Language is recognized as an integral part of every subject since reading, writing, listening and speech contribute to a child's progress in all curricular areas. The National Focus Group on Teaching of Science emphasized on experiment-based learning, on improving school libraries, laboratories and workshops. It promoted and it emphasized that there should be a culture of experiment-based learning in the school, reducing importance of external examinations. A need was also felt to have computer interface experiments and projects utilizing database from public domain. With so much of information available online, the learners should be encouraged to watch interesting videos which are available online. Reflect upon them, try to work it out and then discuss it in the classroom. It was also said that efforts should be made to enable children to examine and analyze everyday experiences because then learning would be more meaningful for them. The National Focus Group on Mathematics Education, it said that mathematics learning should help in enhancing the child's ability to think and reason, visualize and handle abstractions and formulate and solve problems. So mathematics is not something which is related to calculations only, rather it is adding value to the personality of a child. He will be able to handle abstractions, he will be able to formulate and solve problems. Environment education was also seen as a very significant, very important and crucial part of the curriculum and it should become a part of every subject. With the rate at which technology is advancing and the misuse which is happening, it has become very essential that we sensitize our learners about the need to protect our environment. Hence, environment education should not be just a separate subject in the curriculum, but rather activities related to sensitization of environment should infuse each and every subject of the curriculum. A paradigm shift was also suggested to study social sciences from the perspective of marginalized groups, a very significant point. It further recommended the gender justice and sensitivity to tribal and Dalit issues and minority sensibilities should also be touched upon and promoted through the curriculum. For work in education, it was said that work should be recognized as a creation of new forms of knowledge and value addition necessary for democratic order. Work education must link up with heritage crafts, especially in craft zones. We have so many communities, so many places in our country where we have craftsmen who are so good in Katputli making, who are so good in Madhubani paintings, pottery and such other crafts. All these resources need to be mapped, tapped. The learners should be encouraged to have pride in their culture, have pride in their craft and take it forward. So that this important source of cultural and economic wealth can be properly harnessed through linkage with education. The NCF also suggested a need for plurality of material. The curriculum resource centers and multiple learning resources should be made available in the school including texts and books, libraries, education, technology, tools and laboratories. So while teaching in the classroom, the teacher need not just stick to one textbook which is available. Rather, she can open the mind of her learners by taking her learners out to the library, showing her different things, maybe making certain uh, documents which are available online accessible to them so that they are able to get multiple perspectives. The NCF also envisaged the need for teacher autonomy and professional independence which is again very crucial because the teacher when she is free to plan, when she is free to design her lesson plan in the classroom, she will be able to exercise all her talent, all her competencies in designing the best material, best teaching methods for her learners. Teacher education, it was suggested, should cover issues of academic planning and leadership at school level to improve and monitor quality. Textbooks are also need to be seen and revised in the light of child-centered pedagogy, providing more resources to creative child to explore and excel. So when we have differently abled children in our classrooms, the textbooks should provide something for differentiated learning opportunities also. Amongst very important points which were suggested and the paradigm shift which has been envisaged and initiated by the National Curriculum Framework, critical pedagogy is one of them. When we talk of critical pedagogy, it means that the children are critical observers. It recognizes that children are critical observers. And so opportunities should be given to them to participate in discussion and problem solving 
related to their education and future opportunities. They are not passive recipient of knowledge which is being given by the teacher. Rather, they are coming with their own understanding of the culture, of their social milieu. So, they are in a better position to understand how education will help them ameliorate, remove all the problems, all the issues which they are facing in their social context. Critical pedagogy also envisages that learners should be encouraged to develop the mental skills needed to think and reason independently, which is very important. They should be able to think on their own and have the courage to dissent, to disagree, to put forth their point of view. They should learn to, they should agree to disagree with others and they should be able to put forth their ideas with conviction. Critical pedagogy provides an opportunity to reflect critically on issues in terms of their political, social, economic and moral aspects. It entails the acceptance of multiple views on social issues and a commitment to democratic forms of interaction. It helps them to see multiple contexts and appreciate them thus encouraging them to become more tolerant. Critical pedagogy further facilitates collective decision making through open discussions and by encouraging and recognizing multiple views and in designing a curriculum which is sensitive to these circumstances. In the light of our framework, the total number of days, working days for the curriculum transaction were decided to be 200 days. The school annual calendar, which was earlier the responsibility of the district level, now it was suggested that it should be decentralized and decided in consultation with the Zilla Parishad, with the Zilla Panchayats. For homework, the policy was that no homework should be given up to class 2 and 2 hours a week should be given from class 3rd of primary schools. For middle schools, the homework timing can be from 1 hour a day which would amount to 5 to 6 hours a week and 2 hours a day that would be about 10 to 12 hours in a week for the secondary and higher secondary. The NCF also made certain suggestions for the teacher education program because when we are planning to initiate changes in our school education, we have to initiate positive changes in the teacher education itself. So it was suggested that the teacher education program should become and should encourage more innovative constructive approach based pedagogy. It should encourage shared context of learning. It should motivate the teachers to become a facilitator of knowledge construction. It should also train the teachers in the multidisciplinary approach to teacher education. It also proposed that there should be more integration of theory and practice dimensions, which is somehow missing in the teacher education program. It was also suggested that there should be engagement with issues and concerns of contemporary Indian society from a critical perspective. So when we talk of gender biasness or gender stereotypes or when we talk about class discrimination or when we talk about education of children with special needs, then the teacher should be trained to work upon these with a critical perspective. The NCF 2005 perceives in-service teacher education as a catalyst for change in school practices. Such a significant role has been assigned to the teacher education program. So it becomes all the more important that when the teachers are being trained in the teacher education program, they are trained to bring about more proficiency in their language skills. There should be a more polishing of their attitude, their professionalism, the work ethics which they are carrying to school and above all, they should learn the art of reflective practice. Thus, Learners, today we have got a burst eye view of the need of National Curriculum Framework 2005, how it evolved, what was its genesis, what were some of the guiding principles, what were some of its major recommendations by different, uh, the various focus groups which were formed, the position papers which were published thereafter, the paradigm shift it has advocated to improve school education. If you need more information on this, please read the complete text which is available on the NCRT website for more insights. Thank you. We will meet again in the next session.